Well, a very pleasant good evening. It's time for the new and improved Small Biz Florida with Katie Muldoon. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> I love that intro. I hope Tom hates it. <laughs> Welcome to another segment and installment of Small Biz Florida, brought to you by the Florida Small Business Development Center at Indian River State College. Small Biz Florida is designed and produced to create awareness for the business assistance programs available here at IRSC. We will also spend time during our hour together to highlight entrepreneurial success, best practices, and discuss all things business around the Treasure Coast and the state of Florida. I am not Tom Kindred. My name is Katie Muldoon, and I proudly serve as your executive producer of Small Biz Florida, the podcast and broadcast, as well as your local administrative and outreach specialist here at the Florida Small Business Development Center at IRSC, and I will be your host for this episode. So before we dive in, I do really want to hear, Greg, I know you have been traveling, I was in the studio yesterday and you were telling me about your adventures. How is the world of pioneer basketball? Well, a uh, double header win last night. The lady, ladies won the opener and the guys pulled out a 72 70 win in front of a lot of NCAA division one coaches across the way. Nice. Yeah, it was. Yeah. So the uh, pioneers are number five in the United States. Wow. Yeah. Up from number seven. So they're having an amazing year. We really do have an outstanding sports division yeah. here at IRSC. And, and I, I great hope academics. Get yeah. Great academics. Too. They really do. Did you get you a Red Bull? It's looking a little, a little sleepy over no, there. Oh, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> These bus rides are starting to kill me, though. That's actually going to be the last chapter of my book. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. My life on a bus. Oh, yeah. Do I get a signed copy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want it. Well, that'll be uh, one of our segments. We'll talk about Greg's book here in the uh, upcoming months of 2022. Um, I am so excited to introduce our guests tonight. With us, we have Dorothy Cam from the Port St. Lucie Business Women Organization. And Dorothy, why don't you go ahead and introduce your organization's new president? Okay, this is Jessica Parrish, and she is awesome and has a lot of great <laughs> ideas and great energy for this upcoming year. That is so exciting. Ooh, so, well, thank so, you. So thank you. Both of you, welcome to the show. Thank you. Got some really great information to talk about tonight. So Dorothy, let's, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your professional background and what led you to the organization. And then we'll dive into the same question for Jessica. I was an artist, or I still am an artist, but I was also always a writer. Okay. And I developed a profession, not only as a writer, but also in public relations. Mm -hmm. And I've lived here 34 years, so I know a lot of people, and many of my friends were encouraging me to join the business women. The timing just wasn't right. I could not make the time commitment. And in January of 2008, one of my friends really, really <laughs> almost begged me to join <laughs> so that I could help do the public relations for the fashion show, because okay. they never really had a PR person as part of the organization. And I with I was working full time then and the company I was working for, my boss was said, go for it. Okay. So with his blessing, I became involved and helped not only put the fashion shows on the map, get them even more publicity where they were sell out okay. you know, shows but also where I started getting publicity for the organization. So the community awareness really, really blossomed. And that was so That's important awesome. because we had been around since 1980, but a lot of people did not know about us, did not know what we did. So that was important. We love a supportive boss. Thank you to yes. that boss that, you know, pushed you for the opportunity and uh, knowing your background with writing, maybe you can help Greg with his book when, it, when it's <laughs> uh, Oh, a ghost I'll writer. bring my red pen. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Uh, that's all right. <laughs> Kara, Kara already does it. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Jessica, same question to you. Tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, sure. So I moved to Florida 31 years ago. So pretty close. Um, left for college from Port St. Lucie, went to Gainesville. Sorry for those FSU fans, but I did go <laughs> Tom to Florida. Would be happy. Go Gators. Yes, go Gators. <laughs> go Gators. Came back, started my career, worked for St. Lucie County for about six years, and then ended up shifting down south to Palm Beach. I ended up commuting. When I came back and got a position with United Way, I wanted to get involved in the community. And the individual that I was replacing retired. Chris Adams. Okay. Um, she encouraged me to join Port St. Lucie Business Women. She was a very active member at the time. 
still is as an honorary and a retired member, um, encouraged me to join. And I think that very first year I became grants committee. (laughs) It was like, you're the new sucker on the block. You're it. (laughs) And I ended up staying as grants chair two or three years. And then they're like, yep, vice president, you're president done. Moving up the ladder. (laughs) So yep. you kept missing meetings, right? Apparently, <laughs> yes. Well, I missed the key meetings. Yeah, yeah the important voting meetings is what it happened. <laughs> well, we're so happy you moved up the ladder, though, and I'm excited to hear what's going to come out of this organization. And you talked about your involvement in the mm-hmm. community. Both of you, tell us a little bit about what this organization does in the community. What are some examples of places we might see you or events we might hear your name at? It's not so much that as what we do for the community. Mm -hmm. Uh, We raise, with our fashion show and the Brick Paver Project, we raise money that we give scholarships to women attending Indian River State College. Mm -hmm. And we also give grants. Everything we raise stays in the community. So we give grants to organizations that deal with women and children's issues. That is that is so great. Can you talk a little bit about about the scholarships for the students out there? This the scholarships. Well, we have three of them, mm-hmm. and they are uh, for, for women. Um, one is re, one who is graduating high school going. Another one is a woman returning to college. Yep. And what okay. is the third one? Is that somebody who is in college? Mm-hmm. Okay, yes. so we cover all grounds, and then you can talk more about the grants. Yes, Since that's your baby. Yeah, <laughs> has been. Yes. Um, so our grants focus on programs or agencies that serve women and children in St. Lucie County. And that could be creating hygiene kits for teenagers so that they don't have an issue during their monthly time at school when they run out of supplies or feeding for st- students over the weekends. There's a lot of kids that only receive their meals during school. And when they go home on the weekends or the summer, there's not a lot of food at the house. So we helped raise funds to provide funding to those agencies to help solve a need in the community when it comes to women and children. That's amazing. That is really great work. And what's even more amazing is that over the years, we've donated over Mm $200,000 to these programs. Wow. Yes. Over 200,000. So not small change. No, it's not. And that's all from just the fundraisers. So recently we added the brick paver because due to COVID, we were unable to hold a fashion show for the last two years. Right. So the brick paver project came in as our 40th anniversary replacement right. of the fashion show. Um, but that's all from the fashion show and the brick right. paver, the $200,000. That's amazing. amazing. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. so excited to get more details on both of those. Before we move on to the events themselves, mm-hmm. though, um, tell us a little bit about the, the application process for either the grants or, or the scholarships. Where could somebody go if they wanted to learn more or apply or could they call you? What's the best way to, to get that? It's online. It's through the IRSC website for, okay. for the scholarships. Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. And yep. I know that to date, I believe we've given out 68 scholarships. Mm-hmm. So we help ensure the futures of these 68 women. That is so amazing. And the grants, I did not know that. The grants yeah. we don't do online though, do we? The grants are not done online. The announcement typically goes out in the spring time. Once we figure out how much we've raised from fashion shows and things like that, we can budget and figure out how much we have available for grants. But that typically goes out through social media, word okay. of mouth or through Dorothy's efforts with PR and things like that. And that application is a paper application okay. that when the grants chair is in place, we can put them in contact with that individual to get that paperwork. Okay, perfect. Yep. And we'll we'll circle back to contact, but what are those uh, social media handles so we can plug them real quick while we're on the topic? Well, we have the Facebook page under Port St. Lucie Businesswomen. Yes. Yeah. Got it. And then we have our own website, pslbw.com. Correct. Yep. Awesome. 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 So tell us a little bit about the, the different Port St. Lucie business women. What differentiates your organization from other similar organizations? What, why would somebody want to join this one? Because we have fun. Yeah. <laughs> because we're awesome. Just by yeah. meeting Hello. y'all, I can tell that's I true. Mean, come on. <laughs> well, for we, we function on several levels. Um, we become friends. Mm-hmm. So we have that social component. We mentor each mm-hmm. other and support each other which is also important. And we have a common goal. And 
having lived in this community for so long, what I particularly like about the business women, it's the one organization where you can have a wide ranging impact. You know, right. you instead of well, think about how many grants we give out and mm -hmm. all the different organizations, you can't be involved with every single one, but doing, you know, being involved with ours, we can impact so many others in a yeah. very positive way. Yeah, that's amazing. Very uh philanthropic. I think I'm saying that word right. Philanthropic. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. There You're we close. go. That's good. You did good. Waiting for words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I beat her to it. Yes. <laughs> Shouldn't have told me that I'll be sending you my thesis and things okay. like that, asking for help. Um, how does somebody get involved? How do they join? And and uh, would there be specific roles for a new member or? So typically a an individual that's interested in joining is sponsored by a current member. So okay. they would reach out to a friend or someone they know that's most likely involved in Port St. Lucie business, business women. Otherwise, if they don't know someone, they could always submit on our website. There's a contact us page and it's okay. usually, you know, I'm interested in membership and either myself or our secretary will reach out to that individual to see if there's connections that can be made or one of us could sponsor them to right. come to a lunch and really see what it's about. We ask individuals that are interested in joining to attend two lunches okay. before the members vote them in to make sure this is what they want, that right. it's something they want to be involved in. You know, they like what we do. They're passionate about what, how we handle things, you know, things like that. And that it's a good fit because right. we don't want somebody joining and then after a meeting or two, oh, it's not what I thought it right. would be. Yeah. And about, we, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, and we have several committees. So depending on what you're interested in, if you're interested in numbers, we have an audit committee. That's not my cup of tea, oh, wow. but yeah. I mean, we have scholarship committee, we have grants and community uh, engagement committee. We have a, now a sunshine committee to help greet and, you know, engage with new members or just members as a whole, hospitality, all kinds of committees. And everybody helps on fashion show committee. Yes. We yes. all have to do something <laughs> because it's our one major fundraiser right. and takes everybody's efforts. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be involved in that one though. Yeah, you I can't know, yeah. specify a committee for that. I feel like everybody would fight over it. I know, think it's just a, fight. you show up and you do what you have right. to do. Completely understand. <laughs> I am, I'm a veteran of working events. Mm -hmm. Completely get it. Um, about how many members do you have? Um, we're right now recruiting for new members and we're getting ready to um, validate all of our members. Our membership dues are due at the end of January, but we were about 40 ish members. We okay. dipped a little bit because of COVID. Right. Um, instead of having lunches twice a month, we went to Zoom, then we switched to hybrid. So there wasn't a lot of opportunity to bring new members in, but we are recruiting for new members right now because we are getting back into right. the swing of things. And uh, they could reach out and express interest via the website, social media, yeah, right. and all that. Or all even right. on the Facebook, if they want to send a message, we have access to all of the Facebook mm -hmm. Messenger and everything if they want to reach out that way as well. Perfect. Perfect. So let's get into what I'm so excited to yeah. talk about. Tell <laughs> us about this fashion show. It will be April 30th at Harbor Ridge Yacht and Country Club, mm -hmm. which is in Palm City. Okay. And it will be from 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. We're so excited because we have the most fabulous silent, silent auction, over a hundred items. Nice. We have raffles. This year we're working on one with, um, I believe the Hutchinson Resort. We're going mm -hmm. to have a staycation package. And also um, we have a piece of jewelry that is custom designed and donated from G. Allen Fine Jewelry. Wow. That's, that's some name dropping here. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, I like right. that. <laughs> It's an amazing time. It'll it be is. fun this year. We're so we started down the road of a fashion show in 2020, right? Then COVID came. Right. So we had to put that to the side. Um, but we're going to continue with the theme that we were planning on in 2020, which is under the sea. Okay. So everything will be geared towards the ocean and things right. like that. So all of our baskets will be themed of some sort around that. Okay. All right. And uh, tell me about you know, the models, the flow of the event. Could, could I come be a model if I wanted? How do you pull those people? <laughs> right. Um, we have a fashion show chair. So as part of the membership, all of our members select a committee or two, if they're passionate to serve on. Um, and we ask those with leadership abilities or potential to serve as either the chair or chair elect. So our fashion show chair and their committee go out and solicit 
small businesses or boutiques in the area or our current fashion show chair knows some of the designers in the community okay. to see if they would be willing to showcase their designs. Um, when we were planning the one in 2020, I think she was looking at two local designers right. to showcase their own collection during okay. the fashion show. Um, in the past, we went to some of the smaller boutiques in the community and pulled in just random models off the street. <laughs> Not literally, but um, yeah. just community members to help right. showcase their their designs. So I'm not sure yet. We're we're still in the early planning stages. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. Um, tell me about the the history of the fashion show. You know, where where did this come from? What was the inspiration to do this specific type of event? They the organization wanted to just have one fundraiser mm -hmm. a year mm -hmm. instead of others that are constantly doing it because it takes a lot of I mean, it. It takes a whole year to plan one right. event, as you know, and I'm not sure how far back it goes, but it used to be held in November, December with a Christmas theme. Okay. But when we got hit with hurricanes, Francis mm -hmm. and Jean, and then the following year, Wilma, then they decided <laughs> let's have it in the spring before <laughs> hurricane season. Smart decision in Florida. Yeah, makes sense. Right. So this will be our 30th one that we're hosting. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That is, that is so amazing. I can't believe I've never heard of this. This sounds like so, so much fun. Definitely want to get the SBDC involved. Um, we'll be following up after the show. Tell yeah. us a little bit about how it benefits the community. What, what comes out of the event? Well, the, like I say, number one, um, if it's a local de designer or a shop, mm -hmm. their mm -hmm. work is showcased. Right. Um, we're also seeking sponsors as yeah. well as donations. So people like that will get credit. And all the money we raise goes right back into the community. So it's a chance to have fun yeah. and do something good. And then the, the silent auction items are awesome. There's often a lot of competitive bidding because they're For really sure. good items. Yeah. A hundred percent of everything that's raised from the fashion show goes to those scholarships and the grants right. that we mentioned earlier. That's so amazing. that helps us, you know, right. put more women into school or, more programs to help feed and right. shelter and clothe children and women in the community. Okay. Wow. I'm, I'm so excited. I'm going to, I'm going to get Greg involved too. You know, Greg, you want to come be a model? Yes. We can sign him we up. We do have model. men's models because oh, we have yeah, some yeah. men's fashion. Uh, I think I do the 50, 50. <laughs> Come on, Greg. It'll be fun. No, actually I have done the 50. That's 50. right. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Well, we, we had a mayor in Port St. Lucie who didn't play fair, but I thought I had sold more tickets, but <laughs> apparently the other Greg did. <laughs> the other no, Greg. It, it, it was it was so much fun. It, it really was. And it's an amazing event. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you guys could not have picked a more beautiful spot. Yeah, Harbor That's Ridge true. is true. absolutely gorgeous. Oh. Yes, it's incredible. And it's actually, even though it has a Palm City address, it really yeah. is in St. Lucie County because that's another thing we want to stay in the county. Mm -hmm. And it's the one place that will actually hold 300 people because we have 300. Comfortably. Yes. Comfortably. Right. Yes, it comfortably. <laughs> and beautifully. I, I've yes. heard. Beautifully with enough parking. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. And a separate room where we can have the silent auction. Right. So we work very well with them. We mm -hmm. have for years. That's yeah. awesome. I, I've heard really good things about that venue. It's a great venue. Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. yeah. And of uh, course, half of that club is in St. Lucie County. Mm -hmm. It's like split right down the yep. middle. Yeah. It's, it's, I it's did not know that. Yes. It's right yeah. on that cusp. Yes, it is. So <laughs> talk a little bit about what a, a sponsor might look like for the event. Um, do you have certain levels? Is it just other organizations or businesses that, you know, are passionate about the initiatives mm -hmm. you're putting forth that want to get involved? Yeah, we, we have levels. Um, I don't remember what they were from the last time. Um, you know, like I think there's 5,000, 2,500, mm -hmm. yeah, something like a thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, and it's any line. business that's interested in helping out our organization right. or any organization. It could come from a nonprofit as well. And, you know, typically with a sponsor package, depending on your level, secures you X number of tickets and things like that. But the sponsors are really to help us offset costs of the right. event so that we can put more money into the scholarships right. and grants and really push all that money that way. Right. Okay. Is there a deadline for a sponsor? 
Um, as of right now, with the event being April 30th, I would say the end of March would be our deadline so that we can secure all of the sponsorships, have the budgets all cleared and know financially where we're at. Okay. And yep. we also publish a booklet that every attendee gets. So we want to make sure that everyone is represented in that. Make sure their logos are in there and okay. whatever they need to be reflected right. in that as well. And I also want to mention our organization is 100% volunteer. None of us <laughs> are paid. So that's why everything we do is for the organization. And that's awesome. And that leads into my, my next question. Is there any opportunity for volunteer involvement on uh, sponsors, vendors, or even students? Yeah, why not? We Absolutely. haven't, but sure. Yeah, I mean, we could always use students at like check-in um, right. or help man some of the stations that are going on. And that could help alleviate some of the pressure from us as members to focus on right. more of the heavier they could be um, items. Yeah, we could utilize any volunteers as runners and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think uh, the School of Business does have a, a business club, Collegiate DECA. Um, I led it for a couple of years. And there is a category of the competitive events aspect of that club that is um, fashion merchandising in the fashion industry. Mm -hmm. So some students who are going into that may be interested. So I'll be sure to share, you know, this show with them and see if they can yeah, get involved awesome. and things like that. If anybody's interested in volunteering, they can email um, info at pslbw.com. And that'll come to myself and our secretary, and we can route that directly to the fashion show chair so that she knows and can reach out. All right, perfect. What sort of crowd does this event draw? Who, who will be there? Is it everybody, everybody? who is Hello. anybody? <laughs> so it's open to the public? Yes, yes absolutely. Um, tickets will probably go on sale the first week in February. It'll be completely online sales only this year. Um, okay but they'll go on sale that first week and it's open to the public, the general public. And how much is the ticket? Roughly about 55. We're working on costs now because okay. everything is increasing. Right. Right. But we try to keep <laughs> ticket price down because we want people to spend their money on the um, silent, silent auction. auction. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. So right. it's about 55. In the past, it's been 55. We're hoping right. it stays the same. We need to right. confirm because we've continued the booking at Harbor Ridge. Right. right. Confirm that that is staying the same, but right. it'll, it'll be, if it's not 55, it'll be around there okay. right, for sure. It's not going to jump up anything crazy. I don't think so. Yeah. I don't foresee that happening. Okay. So that's exciting details about, about your main event, but I know we do have another one, the, the brick paver project. Am I saying that right. correctly? Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. That was the brainchild of our member, Diane Gallagher. She is head of history committee. She is also a longtime resident of Port St. Lucie. And um, she did this in conjunction with our Ruby Jubilee, our 40th anniversary. And it was a way to not only raise funds to potentially replace what mm -hmm. we would normally have made in a fashion show because we couldn't hold a fashion show. But also, um, it's a way to be a commemoration for the community. For our 30th anniversary, she arranged to have a tree planted in front of City Hall. Wow. And uh, Mayor Orbeck was thrilled with it because he says, we're always giving something to the community. Instead of hosting a big party, he said, we chose to yeah. give a tree. Then we donated a plaque uh, for the 35th. Mm -hmm. So we had that. And then for the 40th, she came up with the idea to have this brick sidewalk leading up to the tree. And you can have the, buy a brick, you get it engraved with whatever you want. You can, wow. so it, it can be, you have the names of your grandkids. It could say happy birthday. It could just be, you know, whatever in memory of somebody could be your business name. Yep. It's the Port St. Lucie legacy. You get to leave. Yes. And it's there forever. Name. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. How do people get involved in this project? Is it specifically in-house? Is this something that we have a, on our website? There is a tab that says buy a brick. Mm -hmm. So you could do everything online and it explains everything and, you know, whatever they want to say. And yeah. How much is a brick? A hundred dollars. That is not bad at all. Yeah, forever. For, for a legacy forever. in Port St. Lucie. They're forever. Right. <laughs> That's how I'm going to be remembered. Yes. Submit my application <laughs> for my go. brick. Put yeah. your name right there. So this is, this happens all the time. There isn't a specific date. Anybody can submit at any time. It's yeah. an ongoing project. Yes. 
Yeah. All right. And same, uh, same deal, but does the money go towards funding the org- organization or is it for the grants and scholarships? Grants and scholarships. Grants and scholarships. That is yeah. so yeah. awesome. The organization's expenses are funded through our membership dues. So okay. the, our dues cover the operational side of the organization. Anything else that we raise through bricks, through fashion show, or any other endeavor that we undertake goes straight to 100% scholarships and the community action and grants that is amazing i could have you say that statement 14 times more and and that would be the end of the show we we need to say no more after that how can someone become uh more involved in any of your events and learn more about the port st lucy business women i know we plugged your social medias and your website but let's let's go over how to get in contact with you two if anybody has any questions or yeah so i'm president at pslbw.com um if anybody has like if volunteers are interested in coming to our events or just learning more about us the info at pslbw.com is perfect They're more than welcome to visit our website. It has all the details. And then there's a contact us section on there as well. Um, Or our Facebook page. Yep. Okay. Okay. And uh, what about you, Dorothy? If somebody needed editing help or something, would you be open to that? Could I get a hold of you? That, that's something I do on the side. Oh, side. Got to plug the side Greg. hustles. That's only for Greg. Yeah. Uh, only for Greg. Okay. <laughs> Public announcement, special, special treatment just for Greg. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But if anybody's, no idea. if anybody's interested in, they email either president or info at PSLBW, we're able to route it to exactly right. where it needs to go and get it done. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. When's your, uh, when's your next meeting? February 3rd, February 3rd, fingers right. crossed. We'll do it in person, right? So if people want to get involved, now's the time to email yes. again, that's info yeah. at PSLBW.com info at Port St. Lucie business That is how you can learn more about any of the events that we talked about tonight, yeah. learn more about the organization, get involved um, for my students listening might be a community service opportunity. And mm-hmm. uh, the date of the uh, fashion show again, April 30th, April yes. 30th. And it's uh, a Saturday. It's a Saturday. Okay. And it's Palm City, Harbor Ridge. Harbor Ridge, 11 to 2. Right. We'll be there all day. So they can earn as many (laughs) volunteer hours as they wish. (laughs) That's so exciting. I know, I know a few students, they're going to hear the word fashion. They're going to be all over it. Uh So hopefully we can get you a few volunteers. Mm -hmm. Good. Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us on the, uh, on the show tonight. Anything else you want to add before we uh, bring on our second guest? No, it's yeah. pretty much covered everything. And thank yeah. you so much for hosting us, Katie. Of awesome. course, you know, as uh, we you. were talking before the show, I would love to start doing some reoccurring segments. And um, I always love when I uh, overpower Greg and bring the ladies in to talk about some things, outnumber him. You know, usually <laughs> I'm outnumbered. So uh, would love to have you back uh, when it gets closer to the event to talk sure. uh, a little Thank bit you. more about it and yeah. how your numbers are looking great like that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, Greg, with that, you want to cut? You bet. We will be back. Segment two, straight ahead.